Welcome to the Mile High Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Daniel Knowles. Thank you for joining us from wherever you are joining us around the world. And we are at the altitude of 5,280 feet, mile high territory. Make sure you hit subscribe. So whatever you are watching this, whether it be Spotify or Apple or YouTube or one of the many other channels, hit subscribe so you never miss any mile high tick. And also, of course, mark September 26th, 29th to Rise Up to Mile High. Um, and you can even just reserve seats at riseuptomilehigh.com for yourself and your team. And we look forward to seeing you on higher ground uh, then. And on today's episode, I'm super grateful. And I know you will get a lot of this particular episode um, as well as all the episodes, but Dr. Amy Gunderson Lewis is a phenomenal um, force of nature in chiropractic. And um, you're going to get a lot out of this. She's at mile, I think she's been to every year, maybe, or maybe missed one. I'm not sure, but she's deeply passionate about and committed to helping people connect to their true power and express life to its fullest and their full life potential optimized. And she graduated from Parker University in 2016 and went to practice in Dallas, uh, Texas with her husband, Tyler Lewis, and they've been practicing network spinal for almost eight years. Um, thank you for joining us today on the podcast, Dr. Amy. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. And yeah, I've been at the majority of mile highs. I missed the first two, I think, but ever uh -huh. since then. <laughs> good, good. Well, I'm glad you dialed in to be there each year. So the first two, uh, we'll, we'll give you a pass on that. Okay. okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and she's honored to also be part of the Network Spinal Teaching Team and serve on Epigenetics Transformation, Transformational Gate Staff. So, um, you know, we, we work together in so many ways, and you're going to get a lot out of this episode. Before, um, before I get started, Amy, uh, something super interesting. Um, what Can you share with people how you found your way into the chiropractic profession? I know you well, and I know the story, but others may not. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, <laughs> there's a couple different perspectives I could tell this from. There's the Weaver perspective where it started way back, but I'll just start with like the simple story. <laughs> um, I was a massage therapist for a long time and I actually worked for chiropractors and ironically didn't know what chiropractic was. <laughs> and that's interesting. How long did you work for him? Oh, you know, probably six years before I found okay chiropractic. Um, I actually ended up working for a chiropractor that was super principled and wanted to bring me to the Parker seminars. As a massage therapist, I went with him, but he was really excited about this man, Dr. Sigafoos. I had no ah, idea who he was, but yeah. that's all he could talk about. <laughs> and, you know, when I got there, it was actually a CA that was speaking on stage. This was Vegas, Parker Seminars in Vegas. There was a CA that was speaking on stage and she was telling the story about a mother who was desperate to help her infant and no medical doctor anywhere she went, nobody could help her. And her baby would stop breathing in the middle of the night for minutes and she was like deathly afraid. So someone told her to come to this chiropractor and she told the story about the moment the adjustment happened. And as she's telling this story and the faith that was restored in the mom and the life that came back to the baby, it's like, for me, again, like I said, I worked for chiropractors, but I didn't really get the big idea. It was really physical for me. Um, mm -hmm. And I never really had my chiropractic moment, but as she's telling the story, it's like the sky parted. I just saw a beam of light and it's like something in my soul was grabbed. And I didn't, I had no idea was happening and this was really the first moment I remember in my life having an experience like that and in that moment I was like this is what I'm meant to do I have to do this mm -hmm. but it wasn't wow. until school when I actually found out why but ah. that, was, that was the moment that I made the decision to go on the trajectory to chiropractic school and later had my chiropractic moment halfway through school <laughs> okay so so then what was your chiropractic moment through school so when I went into school, I was still bringing my massage therapy lens with me. And so my plan was to do ART and work in sports chiropractic. And, you know, it was, I was a completely different version of myself. And also I was really closed minded. I kind of was really like one track minded, um, you know, and I went after what I wanted, but I wasn't 
I didn't honor the natural rhythms of life. And so I ended up going into a bur adrenal burnout. Okay. And I had a similar experience where I was getting adjusted. Nothing was changing. Symptoms were getting worse. I was having panic attacks where I'd have to sit in my car. I couldn't go into class. My hair was falling out. I was getting brown patches on my skin. It was really intense. And so a friend of mine was like, Hey, I know that you've tried everything. Cause I literally, I went everywhere. I started with chiropractic, but I went to neurologists. I went to, I went everywhere. And she was like, you know, there's this really weird form of chiropractic. Really <laughs> weird form. <laughs> right. And this is how she described it to me. <laughs> there's this really weird form of chiropractic. And if you're open to it, and I think it's, she described it like that. She was talking to me. Cause like I said, I was a very different version. Like you mentioned energy and I was like, yeah, whatever. Even though that's a basic principle of life, but I was uh -huh. really, I was different. And so she's like, you know, I'm going, if you want to just try it, just like, you know, just, just once. And so, you know, at that point I was like, literally anything I will go. And I remember walking into my first network spinal office, well, ne network spinal analysis at the time. And I saw everyone on the tables with these like with snake like movements going through their spines. And it was like, you know, again, there was that essence of like when the sky parted, when I was at that seminar that brought me to chiropractic school, like, yes, it was something different than I'd ever seen. And if you would have asked, like, just explain it to me, I would have been like, this is crazy. It's impossible. But mm -hmm. the life I felt running through these people was life that I hadn't felt regularly with others. And so I got on the table and, and I got in trained and the first contact, I just remember this breath going through me that went on for what seemed like forever. It, I instantly felt like I expanded beyond the earth and uh, like way, way out. It was this crazy spiritual experience. And it was the first visit. First visit. And and that kind of shows you how fight or flight my system was. <laughs> and yes, right. first visit and destiny point. But you know, in that moment, it was like how I realized, have I ever even breathed in my life? Like it was this awareness that I've been living such a diminished state of life that I didn't realize that. I thought it was just one thing that was wrong. And I just needed to like get it fixed so I could continue pushing ahead with whatever I had planned for my life. And it interrupted all of that. I remember going outside and it's like the bushes were a color of green I'd never seen before in my life. It's like I was on acid. It was insane. And I never, I had never done it. I assume this is what it was like, but it was the most amazing experience. And it wasn't, I did, I wasn't even focused on what the problem was that I went in. All of a sudden it was like a profound awareness that, oh my God, my life has to change. Like something wow. has to change now. Wow. And, and so, <laughs> yeah. and 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 um, another interesting fact is that you um, uh, skipped graduation, or you had a different graduation. Yes, a very different graduation, which is very appropriate because it was a completely different version of me. And I feel like it was my graduation to really the life I was meant to live. And so I didn't go to the Parker graduation because the at the time, I think it was called the level three network seminar was being taught by Donnie on the same exact day. And it was said to be the last seminar he would ever teach. <laughs> um, he had since then been involved in other ones, but the last one. And so I knew there was no way that I was going to miss it. And so I went there instead and there was actually a surprise for me Donnie brought me up on stage played the graduation song and then pinned me with torches that he was giving out that year and it was the most special memorable graduation I could ever even imagine and so yeah it was really it was really amazing wow that's that's pretty special now now let let me say this you said it changed your like how did you see chiropractic school at that shift Wow. But, you know, what was the turning point to what chiropractic school was and after that? I mean, it's really funny because it was a complete 180. Like I went into school and, you know, Parker is not known for being the most philosophical school, but there was philosophy. Which classes. is sad because it was at one point. Right, exactly. And so it was sprinkled in there. And there were teachers that really were principled and there was access to that. But when I first went to Parker, I went there looking at the body biomechanically and I was looking at things kind of like mechanistically, how you know, Parker's more geared towards now, but I, I missed all of that. I didn't see any of that because I didn't value it. And so it's like, it wasn't there. And then all of a sudden after this, because you think it would be the opposite, but after this, mm -hmm. it's like, all of a sudden I found those gems and I saw why I ended up in the place I ended up. Yes. It wasn't the most philosophical school, like I said, but there was so much richness there that I couldn't see before. And there was the challenge of, okay, there's a lot of mechanistic 
perspectives here and allopathic perspectives and it's necessary to go through to get my license but it gave me a lot more fuel and drive to get that license because I knew it was on the other side of that I understand yeah. I understand and now um you have um uh, what what did you have 100 percent cash practice and you practice with your spouse and you know there's some people that say those couple things can't happen like you can't have a cash practice people say it's Oh, practicing with your spouse has got to be hard. I, I couldn't work with my spouse. Um, you know, and then on top of that, you do you're involved with other things in terms of teaching, um, and 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 that is even more demand. So, first of all, you know, it, what does it take? What what's it like? I mean, people I know people, I'm sure you hear this all the time, like, oh my God, I, I couldn't possibly work with my spouse. Um how does that work in your world? How is it that it's possible to work with your significant other? You know, I couldn't imagine it any other way. And I know that you understand this too, working with yours, but honestly, your practice is a reflection of you. And it's like, there's no such thing as life work balance. It's life work integration and ha having the opportunity and the honor. And, and I'm so grateful to have my husband be able to be a part of business as well as every other part of my life. It's amazing. There's so many gifts to it but I could see how it could get challenging if you aren't fully committed to being in integrity in all aspects of your life. It kind of forces you into that because now you're meshing different parts of your life. Um, but as working with my spouse, where we intuitively work together in a way that we don't have to say much. We read each other really well. So, you know, in the beginning of practice, we didn't have staff. It was just me and him. And we could have six people on the table, phones ringing, people needing to get checked out, people coming in, exams coming in, all this stuff going on at once. And we just knew where each other were at because of that intimacy. And so it was so easy to work with him. And where the challenge actually started to come is when we started to hire people outside of each other and learning to work with other people that we didn't have that same intimate connection with. So, so go ahead, go ahead, Amy Chark. Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest thing working together that I feel like is the biggest gift. Um, and also, I feel like I'm less limited and how much I can focus on chiropractic and business because it's part of life. And, it, and yes, we bring it home and we know like the boundaries as far as like it can't all be business, but I'm not sacrificing anything because it's mm -hmm. like we get to be there together in it together. That's that's beautiful. And I, I firmly, I mean, I, I personally feel it's incredible reward to practice with your significant other. And and I'm I'm very grateful. I mean, um, I think it can happen both ways, but I'm really grateful that's the situation I'm in because I think it brings a different depth to to our our our, our work and personal life because there's a certain understanding that we have of our mission and purpose. Um, so, and that's, you know, that's really important. Now that doesn't mean it doesn't have its challenges. What are some of the challenges that maybe you had to learn or grow through of working with your spouse or significant other? Yeah. I mean, again, it's like the challenge is making sure that everything isn't business. And mm. so, you know, we'll catch ourselves at home talking about the practice, talking about what we need to do next or talking about the day. And pretty soon it's like, okay, wait a minute, there are other domains of life and we really need to <laughs> be able to experience those as well. Not necessarily looking for that perfect balance, but also it's like, it can't all be business. And so that's been the, the challenge that we've had to develop discernment and navigate for mm -hmm. the most part. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what are, you know, what are some of the gifts of that? So some of the challenges, what are some of the gifts in terms of your personal life of having a significant other that you're sharing a practice with? I mean, you said it really well. It's like it brings another depth and richness to even our relationship and our intimacy because we understand each other's like mission and values and purpose so deeply. And we both work to help assist each other on that mission. And so it's such an intimate experience. Um, yeah. And, and, and we understand each other in a way that maybe we wouldn't if we were having our own separate experience of what that looks like right. in business. Right. Okay. So now... Um, some people are super concerned of like, well, you know, I I can't have no insurance, you know, um, or, you know, people aren't going to want to pay for chiropractic out of their pocket. Um, what would you say about having a cash practice? 
you know, there was no other option when we started practice. And one, I attribute that to amazing role models like you and other people in the profession that I see doing this. And so I never, we were really lucky. We came in in a phase where it's like, it was never shown to be impossible. So I never once thought that it was impossible, but, um, you know, honestly, people have no problem paying for care. Once you set context, Ah, it just takes education. I like that setting context. Yeah. I mean, I literally, and I know this sounds unrealistic to some people who haven't had a cash practice, but I can count on my hands how many people came in and said, I'm only going to go to someone who covers in, or is covered by my insurance. If they're in the office, they get an exam. That's never the objection that keeps them out of care. And mm. so it's like people are willing to pay for it once they know what they're paying for. And once they realize what insurance is there for. Right, right. Right. And then that helps. Does Do you find that increases the experience of value in the care? Absolutely. Yes. Oh my gosh. Throughout the years, learn the most valuable lesson of like, you know, help, if we give people deals or help them out or whatever, if they're not really don't have skin in the game, a lot of times they don't value it and get the results that they really could get. Right. And so right. when people are actually paying out of pocket, they have more on the line. Right. Right. And so they're more committed. Right. Absolutely. Now, also, you mentioned something about practice being a mirror. How do you feel practice has helped you personally grow? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So, you know, anything that pops up in practice, like I'm a big believer in like extreme ownership. Like if something's popping up, then there's something with me that resonates with that. And so it highlights all those things, all those aspects of myself that maybe I have shied away from or I've been like lazy about confronting, like practice will amplify those things. Mm -hmm. And the minute I actually address those things with myself, all of a sudden that shifts the whole practice. And I've noticed that time and time again, it's like, you know, in my life, if I'm not practicing what I preach, then all of a sudden I have patients that don't want to be accountable. Or if I'm not willing to pay out of my pocket for things that I know are going to serve my health, all of a sudden people are having financial issues. Or, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm having certain dynamics in relationships at home, I find that my staff ends up having those dynamics. Or And so it's just, it's always reflecting and always amplifying what's going on because you're the driving energy of your practice. So it's just going to continue the patterns that you possess. Oh, I love that. You're the driving energy of your practice. That's that's a super important thing. And most people uh, don't necessarily realize that, you know, um, that's that's a, an important thing because um, a lot of people want want something else to fix or bring together a focus, focus in, in the practice and not necessarily uh, they bring less energy to it, you know, sadly. And the real thing is that you have to bring your energy. You're, you're the most important element of your practice. Now, what was a particular challenge in practice that you found along the way was difficult. Look, you know, everybody, I, I definitely had many break time, breakdowns in practice where, you know, I, I wanted to throw in the towel. So what were one of the challenges uh, for you in practice? Oh man. I mean, there's plenty like one. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, there's, there's quite a few. Having a practice is a big character builder for sure. Um, you know, you mentioned just the bandwidth that it takes. Like mm. that's something that in concept, you know, you see other people that have these practices and, oh, that looks so fun. You get to express authentically. You get to do things how you want to. You get to be with community all the time. But until you do it, you don't really take like understand what it takes to build that. That doesn't happen overnight. And so the bandwidth development and, you know, I, I remember in the beginning, especially it's like building the practice, coming home and just like crying. Like, I don't think I'm enough for this. Like I can't do, like, I mean, I still probably do that sometimes, but, but you know, that's one is just the bandwidth and, and, and trusting the process of like, this is a stretch and, and I'm going to grow into the person I need to be to make this happen. And this is the only way for that to happen. Um, COVID that's was it. growing into the person that you have to be. That's super important one. Right. Yeah, exactly. I, I read a quote the other day and it's like, don't look for your dreams to become true. Look for yourself to become true to your dreams. And that's ultimately it. It's like we, our, our practice turns us into the person we need to be to show up for other people. Well, and that's, that's, that's important. Yeah. 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 I mean, if we're one, you can't take someone beyond where you're at. And if you're committed to serve other people, then you have to show up at that level. And it's always growing and always expanding and always deepening. And you're part of that. So you heal through your practice too. 
Well, that's an important thing. You you have to become the person that can run a business and run a person at a certain level. Like, for example, staff. People often say they struggle with uh, having a team member. Well, you have to grow into the person that can um, optimize, inspire a team, even even one team. And then you have to become the person that can inspire more team members. Um, and some people, that's a, a area they just want to stay the same person as they have been. And, and you can't st stay the same person to grow any business. No, no. And especially, yeah, with the team, that's a huge one. And then getting an associate and then that different type of leadership. And then, I mean, associate is a huge thing that highlights all the, the stuff that you've been avoiding because now you have someone that's literally like duplicating everything you do. <laughs> and so that's a big way to learn through. Right, right. And, you know, um, uh, Tony Robbins and his business mastery program, he, he one of the great big takeaways he emphasizes that is that business is the ultimate spiritual game. Um, you know, and, and it's a it's a growth crucible and people uh, tend to want to not change. Right. So but opening a business, if you want balance in your life, is probably the biggest force of instability that you all um, uh, uh, next to having kids. <laughs> or getting married that you will, you know, have to embrace and grow through. And sometimes people don't want to do that. Absolutely. And, yeah. and then it reflects because then the business gets stuck. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, as we're, as we're talking here, what is something that you want people that are listening to this or watching it? Um, you want to have them learn from you. I mean, really the importance of community, that's a huge focus in our practice, but also the way that we live. And that's honestly the only way, you know, you talk about these moments where it's like, you want to throw in the towel. That's the only reason why I feel like I didn't all those times is because I plugged myself into a community that was supportive and where we give and share and reciprocate and actually are on this like journey together. And that's so important having that. Right, right, uh, absolutely, and um, that that's a. Do you feel like? Uh, let me expand on that. Do you feel like community? You know, building a community is vital for a practice growth. Absolutely, one hundred percent. And, like, and why? Something. Why and how? Let's start with why. Why is that important? Well, one, it's like if we're saying that healing is coming back to wholeness, it's like community is key to that like being connected to others, recognizing that we're connected to the whole. And so that's important. But two, it's like the support. I see, you know, community has always been a focus of our practice. We do a ton of classes. We do a lot of community events and just watching the people build relationships and having a community of people who are committed to the same thing and the same level of life and who are committed to growth and going beyond. All of a sudden, it's like their progress changes and they have these relationships that help them all grow into the best versions of themselves. And that's something that, you know, me and Tyler and now Rachel, like we can't be the only support system. And so having a support system for all your people, they do it for each other, which is amazing and, and wildly valuable. Right. Right. And, and, and that it's vital. And a lot of people, you know, they want to just make the office something where there's a exchange or it's transactional. It's got to be a lot more than transactional exchange is part of it, obviously, uh, monetarily and, and energetically. However, they, you've got to make your practice a place that people, you know, it's their oasis of, you know, there's a certain experience, their oasis of healing that that they're connected to the practice and to, to other people. And without that, I mean, community is a vital part of, of healing. Um, now, right, if you, if, if you want to bring what kind of change do you want to bring to the world through practice that's a big question um and and you know it's interesting because that's always evolving but the biggest thing is like a having people recognize that they're the ones that can save themselves, like connecting them to their true power. And ultimately like that expression of wholeness and honoring the rhythms, the natural rhythms of our bodies and life and really coming back to the intelligence and, and having faith in that. I mean, it's, it's vitalism ultimately is the, the thing I want to perpetuate through our practice, but it's so much more than just that word and, and what that entails. 
Excellent. Excellent. Now, uh, that being said, do you put energy into, you know, your practice now? You've got a thriving practice. Um, oh, actually, let me ask you this first. Um, you're part of Lifetime Wellness Practice. How has that impacted you? It's been huge. It's amazing. Like, you know, if you, if you were to ask me, what is the main thing that you tell every single new graduate? And I'm like, join lifetime wellness practice. I like, that's literally the first thing, because, you know, I think we, the minute we joined our practice doubled and that's just wow. because it's true. It's, it was like wild what systems can do for you. And it's like, you know, we went into it. I, I was never an associate. Tyler was never an associate. We opened a practice. We didn't know what we were doing, but we just started it. And so it's like, there was a lot of things that we didn't have systems for and every single system that we we would implement, boom, practice explosion. It's like, oh, instead of like month to month, like re-exams and we go from there, it's like care plans, like actual care plans and, you know, things like that. It's like huge huge, huge impact on the practice. And those are things that we didn't have to find out through trial and error. And so that's it. I, I remember making the recording to map out finances for you guys. Um, yeah. And that was a big shift for all of you in terms of being able to help more people. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And so now students, now you're in practice, you're doing well. Um, you, you go to Mile High, you're involved with our Lifetime Wellness events and you teach. That seems like a lot to do. Do you, uh, at the same time, do you put um, energy into students? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have club at our office, us and Jarrett Browning. We switch alternate weeks. We have student club. Um, we see a lot of students. Um, our new associate, Rachel, actually started off as a practice member, got inspired to go to school, went to chiropractic school, and then now joined our practice as an associate. So students have always been a part of the practice. And so, yeah, 100% yes. Excellent. Excellent. And do you find that rewarding? Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How? So, you know, one thing is when I was a student, there wasn't a network club. There wasn't really any mentors in the area that would spend a lot of time with us. And so just knowing that we're helping provide something to help these students make you know, be successful faster, to be able to, you know, express their gifts faster and to be able to have that like extra boost is wildly rewarding. And mm -hmm. also, I mean, they make me better. So working mm -hmm. with the students all the time, they ask me questions. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't like, I don't <laughs> even know where this question came from. I would never ask myself. It makes me explore. And so they definitely make me better skill wise, leadership wise, human wise, all the, all the ways. Mm -hmm. Excellent, yeah. excellent, excellent. Well, and here's the thing. Do you, do you feel it's important for uh, doctors that have the values and principles of chiropractic in their heart to uh, put energy towards students? I mean, you've left school, kind of left that behind. Do you feel it's important for doctors to do that? I mean, absolutely. Because if not, then how is it going to continue? And it's like you hear everyone complaining about like the principles getting lost, but what are you doing to contribute to continue them? And right. so, I mean, what, and, and even thinking about our own experience, there were people that poured into us. How could we not give back in that way? Right, right. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's sad and it's true that, you know, that there's less and less chiropractic in the educational experience. And um, that means there's less and less chiropractors with the more bigger picture of chiropractic. And if that's the case, they, they have to get it from the docs in the field. Yes, absolutely. Right. Right. And, you know, ha has attended, I, you were already on a chiropractic path um, pretty solidly had the chiropractic attending mile high contribute to that for you or after your transition to uh, the focus of practice that you transitioned to. I mean, absolutely. It adds so much more depth and perspective. Like mile high, the first year I went, obviously I was blown away because I kept coming back to every single one, but we, <laughs> we bring our team and tell everyone about it. And it's like, it's so amazing to be there with people that practice the art differently at abide by or serve the same principles and to to really just even feel the field there and the nourishment of that it like things just start to click and the perspective gets bigger it's beyond technique and so yeah i mean it mile high is a huge contributor to 
our practice, the way we practice, how we communicate, why we communicate, and all of the things that we do. And that's why we continue coming. You know, we brought our staff this last time and, and someone was new to our staff. And she said, out of everything we brought her to, Mile High was her absolute favorite. And it really- Oh, wow. Yeah. I did not know she, that. That's awesome. Yeah. And she had been, we brought her to the gate. We brought her to a lot of other things. And she's like, Mile High was it. Like she loved it. Wow. So wow. It's really cool to see the impact on like staff and people that are non-chiropractors too, just to really feel that field. Well, I, I tell people all the time that um, always bring your team, yeah. always bring your team. And, and people like, oh, there's a flight, there's a hotel, it's spending money, maybe they have to play in payroll. Like, whoa, that's like a lot. And, and, and here's the thing. And, oh, what if my team quits or, or whatever? Look, first of all, if your team quits, they've done you a favor. If if after something like Mile Higher or any other event, they decide to quit, then they saved you a lot of money, okay? They saved you a lot of time and energy to find a person that is more on track with this being a purpose and a career. That's that's the first thing. You know, you, they, they just gave you a raise, right? That's the case. And, and then, you know, number two, you get one thing that sparks a fire in them while they're at an event. And obviously I'm, I'm biased to Mile High, but it could be DE, it could be Sherman Lyceum, it could be something for your technique that you bring them to and it make, like opens their eyes wide uh, as to what you do. If you get one or two referrals from that different energy that you bring, it is worth every penny that you, you know, invest in their attendance to, to something, you know, and a lot of people don't think that way, sadly. Yeah. I mean, it's invaluable. And it's like, if you look at things from, oh, the money, the flight and lack, it's like, okay, well, that's actually, then, then you don't bring your team. That's what you're going to perpetuate in practice. And you're going to lose money by not bringing them from that aspect too. It's right. like you're investing in the team culture and different parts may come in, but they're joining this culture that you've invested in. And so it's not going to the specific person per se. Yes, it is. And they're also part of a bigger team field. Now, now what would you like chiropractors um, to know from you about chiropractic? It's, it's principle, it's philosophy, science, or art. What's something that you would like them to know? You know, um, eight years in, I think you are at this point. Something I would like other chiropractors to know. Yeah. From me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Philosophy, science, art, business, whatever it is. Gosh, I mean, we've touched upon a lot of it because the biggest things I think for me in practice and, 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 and things that I would want to translate for other people is, again, recognizing that your practice is a reflection of you and you can't take people beyond where you're at, the importance of community and persistence and always like really having a vision and connecting to that why, because that's going to be the energy that pulls you through all those times mm -hmm. where you go home and you're crying in bed. I don't have an, I'm not enough for this and whatever. And so, I mean, it's just having the faith in the intelligence that, you know, we're serving and your own experience with that. And, and just any time you go into lack, choose to serve anyways, you're going to like, just give. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, now let's flip that a little bit differently. What would you like students to know from you? <sighs> students, you know, find a mentor, find people that are mm. doing, that's the biggest thing, like find people that are doing the things that you want to do and watch them and learn from them. And you don't have to do it all on your own. And there's no wrong way. Cause I hear people saying like, Oh, the best thing to do is go be an associate or the best thing to do is go start your own practice. Or there's always these opinions about what the best thing to do is. And honestly, again, you're going to grow through whatever decision you choose. And that's going to make you a better chiropractor and it's going to allow you to better serve others because you've grown. And so it's really just like immerse yourselves in the field of the people that you want to be like, and that inspire you and find someone to, to mentor you and, and keep you accountable. Being in the field of people of the people that inspire you. That's, that's a strong, a strong statement. Um, now, um, this weird thing that they brought you to this weird chiropractor that says this weird stuff. Um, what is one thing you would like doctors or students to know about Network Spinal? 
<laughs> you know, honestly, it's not that weird, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's life. It's like, these are the principles in action. Like this is more chiropractic than anything else I've come into contact with. Like network is, you know, the epitome of life expression. And you look at a person holistically and mm -hmm. Man, the depth. Oh my gosh, a student. They asked me, okay, so in club, it's the things that you think that are just implied. This is another reason why I like working with students because they point out all the things that you just assume that are implied and it's not. A student asked me, so, but with network, like, do you still get to have like some of the art? Like is, is the, the art of chiropractic? And I stopped for a minute, I just kind of looked at him. I'm like, what? I'm like, <laughs> it's all art. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh my gosh, like I get it. You're you, some people like start to learn network or see network and they're like, oh, there's this analysis and there's all these things you have to be aware of. And there's all these rules. And it's like, yeah, the learning of it. So you know what to be accountable to and, and you know how to have objective outcomes and all these mm -hmm. things, but it's all art being with a person and being present with a whole being and what perspectives to hold and how you go about helping someone connect with themselves. It's all art and so um i got a little bit off track but no network, but it's good it's good <laughs> yeah I, network is the most fascinating profound experience like being a part of that and practicing that and it's helped me evolve more than anything else in my life ever has because of the nuance and because of the many many perspectives to be accountable to and to also hold presence with and give light to it's amazing well, you know, I got to say that, and it might have been even been at Parker or at your office. I, I It may not be true because I go to a lot of places, but, um, and I don't think this is the only time someone asked me, they had asked me, well, you know, could you have like the experience or, you know, if you're doing network, could people have the experience of like in two or three visits that their life change? And I was like, huh? <laughs> you right. know? I was like, what, why wouldn't they, you know, it's, it's mind boggling that, that, exactly. and, and that's with any approach that's certainly possible. Yes. With any approach. I was just talking to someone about this the other day, but you know, I think someone was saying like, what are the, the, the miracles that you've seen through chiropractic? And it's really interesting because there's a ton of course, right. They happen every day, but it starts to become, this is normal. Like this is the way life expresses. And so all of a sudden it's like, you know, I might say something and someone's like, Oh my gosh, that really happened for someone. And I'm like, what do you mean? This is how life expresses. And it's kind of that same thing. It's like things start to become in, implied and it's cool to get kind of a zoomed out like when someone brings light to that it's this is not normal <laughs> right 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 yeah right. It, it's cool to see that and and recognize how lucky we are to be in the field of chiropractic be surrounded by the people and the types of people that we are and that this isn't normal for the culture but like being on the mission to make this normal for the culture right 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 so 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 let me ask you this uh last thing as we're winding down and i'm so excited you'll get to you've been to every mile high other than the last two so i'm sure you'll be at mile high 12 absolutely okay so you know if you want to talk to dr amy you don't see her before then definitely go up and say hello when you're at mile high 12 um in september september 26th to 29th and also um you can find out all the details by going to rise up to milehigh.com now here's the thing um i like to ask you this impactful chiropractic read what has been a, re a chiropractic read that was impactful to your, to your life? I mean, I have to say like Seeker's Code just came out and that's like Donnie Epstein's book. Like that is a must read for sure. Um, if I were to go further back than most recent, um, man, you know, I read, and here's the funny thing. It's like, when you're dealing with truth and the way that life expresses, like all books become chiropractic reads. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so I was actually thinking about books just the other day. And it's like, I, I start so many books. I don't finish them all, but so many books and they all start to blend together. And it's like, what I'm always looking for and searching through is like that common truth and that common perspective. So right now I'm actually reading one that I think is helpful in business and in chiropractic in a lot of different ways, but it's not technically a health or chiropractic book, but it's called Hidden Potential. And mm. it's talking about how, you know, really anybody is capable of anything and people think that certain people are just gifted, but really it comes down to commitment and your willingness to fail. 
And mm. so it's a really cool book, but I think it translates a lot through like the messiness of healing through practice, being a chiropractor and in a lot of different ways. But yeah, so that's my, my top read right now. <laughs> that's how I can answer. Excellent. Excellent. Um, well, thank you for taking your time to be on the mile high podcast. I can't believe with, you know, uh, nine mile high attendance of behind under about we didn't get to do this till now but i'm grateful to have to finally catch up and um thank you for being such a, a force of nature and impacting people's lives i mean when someone is involved with teaching um and then also informed with students and having club meetings at your office that's being incredibly impactful above and beyond what many chiropractors do. So I want to thank you for, for doing that uh, in addition to joining us today. Thank you so much, Danny. Yeah, it's an honor. And this was so fun. <laughs> well, and and as, as we'll say to everyone, A, uh, rise up to mile high in September. B, um, keep, changing, keep changing spines, lives, and minds with chiropractic. Absolutely. Thank you. 